Hey YouTube, what's up? This is gonna be my entry into Jay's uh, funny work story contest. So, uh, let me light my pipe here. Is it good or not? We'll try it again. There we go. So, uh, I got two stories for you. Um, one's kind of short, and the other one's a longer story, so I'll tell this first one, the shorter one first, so here it goes. Um, when I first started working at McDonald's, they made us wear black shoes. They were supposed to be, like, non-slip and all that. So, um, I had a, bought a new pair, but they broke. So I started wearing these old army shoes, or boots, and I didn't have any laces in them because I got them, the army boots, like, two years ago, or like going on three years now I, when I cut my thumb off and I couldn't tie the laces on them so I just took them out and uh, when I started wearing these boots at work I still hadn't put laces in them so uh, people were always asking me why I went without shoelaces and I got sick of telling this story I cut my thumb off so I couldn't tie shoelaces and I would just go without them you know and it got boring people were just go oh, okay that's that's cool so I decided to come up with uh some new, a new story to tell people when they asked about my shoelaces and uh it was mostly like the new people like their first or second day I'd be training them to do something or I'd walk by and they'd ask you know so um sometimes people would ask I'd, I'd look at them real serious and like I'd say my probation officer doesn't let me wear shoelaces and they'd get this like shocked look on their face and they're like oh and they didn't, they wouldn't, I would just kind of like quietly walk away and they'd be like staring at me with this, like their jaw would drop and they'd be like, what, what's with that guy? <laughs> and that was always good. And uh, another one I did was, uh, I'd say with this like real stupid accent, like, mama never taught me to tie my shoes, so I, I just don't wear no shoelaces, can't tie them. <laughs> And that one got a funny reaction all the time. It is, I don't know why. But I, I think they most of the time people believe me. They just kind of get all slack jawed and just kind of stare at me, and I just walk away and keep doing my business. And it was, it was fun. I think they caught out after a while. Like I it was just a normal person. <laughs> and uh, but it was funny. Just mess with the new people. So, uh, my other story, this one's gonna be a little longer, but, uh, this story went, took place over the course of, like, probably a good month and a half. Um, I tell all people at work this story all the time, we always have a good laugh about it, but, uh, it's, it's called The Laptop Guy, and, uh, for, like, I guess it started, um, after, like, a week, we noticed this guy kept coming in this customer and he'd get a sandwich and a drink and it was either like early in the morning or late late at night and uh... he'd set up his laptop and if you wanted to plug your laptop in you had to ask one of the employees because the only outlet was behind the counter and uh... so he'd sit where he could, could where his cord could reach and someone would plug his computer and after a week we noticed he was coming in every morning or every night we are like, okay, you know, we just another regular customer. So, um, I mean, no one really minded. So, after about, like, three weeks, it started to become a problem. Because he'd, he'd come in, like, drunk and or hungover, and he's, he'd be, like, rude to people. Um, one, <laughs> one night he was annoying the manager who was on duty. Oh, he always rode a bike. To McDonald's too. Like every time, like he he'd uh, set his bike outside against the guardrail and come in. So one night he was annoying the manager. He was he was an oldie guy too, by like late 30s or 40s. I mean not old, but he was older than the rest of us. So um, he was being annoying, and the manager had these kids who were in the lobby hide his bike, and uh, she thought they'd just put it on the other side of the parking lot, but they hid it behind this behind a grove of trees behind the store and it took him three days to find the bike he was so pissed off 
And uh, he's, he'd actually started riding another bike. Oh, my music turned off. Oh, well. But, um, yeah, he finally, oh, I finally found my bike. Someone must have hit it. He was grumbling about it. We just laughed because, like, we all knew where it was. We just didn't feel like telling him. So he gets his bike. And he didn't come in for, like, two days after that. And then he starts coming in. So it's, like, probably a good month he's been coming in every night. And uh, he started locking his bike bike up after that. So um, one Sunday morning, it's like 4 a.m. I'm just cleaning up the lobby, and this he walks in. And I shouldn't say walks, cause he like stumbled through the door. And you could tell this guy was like severely hungover, like probably still drunk. I don't even know how he managed to get his bicycle to the store. But uh, he came in and ordered a sandwich, plugged in his computer, and he sits down and he passes out. For a good four hours, he's sleeping in the lobby. And, uh, I mean, he was, he was, like, snoring and drooling, and we were laughing, and finally it was, like, it was a good four hours later, probably, like, 8.30, 9 o'clock, <laughs> and uh, the manager says, Josh, you gotta ask that guy to leave. Oh, this guy's older than me, he's bigger than me. I said, said, no, I ain't asking him to leave. You can ask him to leave. And I wouldn't have asked any of the managers to tell this guy to leave if it wasn't the manager that asked me. Because I swear, she's built like a horse. And she's as mean as a rattlesnake. <laughs> and she's like three times as big as me. And I told her, you, you can kick him out. I'm not messing with some drunk guy in our lobby. So she, says, she says, okay, well, I'll do it. She goes up to the guy and says, sir, you got to leave. You're loitering now. You've been here a couple hours. You're drunk. Just go home. I mean, we can't have you here. You're disturbing the other customers. He says, I ain't leaving. She says, sir, you have to leave. <laughs> he says, I ain't leaving. You can't make me leave. She says, well, we'll see about that. So we go behind the counter, and I keep watching him. I'm just leaning in the corner of the lobby on a broom, broom <laughs> watching this all go down. So uh, she, the manager goes behind the counter and calls the police. It's <laughs> so, like three minutes later, this cop walks in. The first thing I know is that she's a female cop. She's like seven foot tall, and she has pink handcuffs on her belt. <laughs> like, oh, this is going to be interesting. So her and the manager walk over to the guy, and the manager says, you, you got to leave now. He says, I ain't leaving. So the cop says, says sir, you, you have to leave. You can't be here. And he says, make me leave. And he starts kind of packing up his things, but he doesn't look like he's going anywhere, you know. That's what he thinks. He thinks he ain't going anywhere. She says, so, sir, you got to the count of three to get up and leave here. I'm forcibly removing you. He says, I ain't leaving. And he's still drunk and, like, falling asleep. Probably doesn't even know it's a cop yelling at him. So the cop says, says, all right, I warned you. And she goes and she grabs him by the arms, picks him up, turns him around, slams on the table, puts some pink handcuffs on him. And it was the funniest thing I ever saw. I mean, this big drunk guy is taken out of McDonald's by a bigger female cop in pink handcuffs. <laughs> this is, it was a riot. It was, it was good. That was the first person I ever saw get taken out of a McDonald's in handcuffs. And uh, hopefully the last, because I didn't really want to deal with that again. But man, it was, it was good. And it, his bike... She put him in the back of the cop car, and I assume took him to the station. So his bike was chained outside. <laughs> and, uh, like, probably about seven hours later, he, he, uh, he got a ride to the store and goes and picks up his bicycle, walks away, and I haven't seen him since. <laughs> we always laugh about it. I mean, people are like, oh, man, I missed that. You know, I should have come into work that morning. <laughs> but, uh, yep. <laughs> but, drunk laptop guy so uh those are my funny stories and um i think my pipe went out yep so uh i guess let's talk to you later keep smoking